What's up everybody, this is Devo Server and today we will try to understand how quantization works in neural networks. Quantization is a technique used to make models smaller, faster and more efficient. So we will see how it works. Neural networks is all about matrix multiplication. We have the inputs, we have the hidden layers and we have each neuron doing a computation by taking the weighted average of the inputs using its weights and then giving it as output. So all these operations are expressed using matrix multiplications. And you can see this is the matrix containing the weights you have the inputs and then you multiply them to get the output matrix which is the outputs of the neurons in that particular layer so we know this and when these neural networks are trained these values are expressed using float 32 bit precision so the data is stored using 32 bits for each of these values quantization tries to model these computations in lower precision formats like int 8 for example so what is quantization in one line, quantization enables models to do computations and memory accesses with lower precision data like int 8 compared to floating point implementations like float32. So when we do this, uh, uh, when we try to approximate float32 numbers using int 8, there's of course some error and different quantization methods try to minimize this error using different techniques. So let's take this weight matrix for example, and it has all float32 values. Let's plot all these values on a number line. Min float is the minimum value that is found in this weight matrix. Max float is the maximum value that is found in this matrix. And then we have the target data type. Let's say it is int 8. So there are 8 bits b equal to uh, 8. So the range of values that you can express using int, int 8 is minus from minus 128 to 127. So you plot that in the number line. Now the goal is to map this real values in this range, min float to max float and map it to this integers uh, range, which is minus 128 to 127 in case of int 8. So the question is how this mapping is done. So we have few uh, fundamental techniques that we use to do this mapping and different quantization uh, mechanisms are built on top of it. And the most common ones are uniform affine quantization and uniform symmetric quantization, which we will look more deep into how they work. So let's take uniform affine quantization and try to understand how it works. So let's define a few terms. Q max and Q min is the maximum and the minimum integer that it can be expressed using int 8. Now this is the transformation function. Before we go into the transformation function, we we'll, let's define a few more terms. X is the floating point value that you want to map. XQ is the quantized version of this floating point uh, value, which is expressed as an integer. So you want to go from X to XQ and XQ to X. So in this mapping function, we see scale and zero point. So let's define those as well. Scale is max float minus min float divided by Q max minus Q min. So basically what you're doing is taking this range. Numerator is this range, max float minus min float. Denominator is this range, Q max minus Q min. We are dividing that to get scale. So intuitively, scale can be thought of as the amount of distance that you move in this floating point number line as you make one step in the integer number line. And then we have zero point. Zero point is an integer where we want to map our real value zero. So let's revisit this equation after understanding a little bit more about zero point. So one requirement that we want to enforce in these quantization algorithms is to exactly map the real value zero to a particular integer. So we don't want to lose out. We don't want to make any errors in mapping zero. Why is that? Why is why are we stressing a lot on expressing zero correctly? Uh, this is because zero comes up in multiple occasions in various deep learning architectures. So if you take CNNs, for example, we do padding before we do the convolution operation and padding is done by zero. Similarly, in ReLU activation, uh, any negative val values are uh, brought down to zero. Positive values stay as it is. Uh, even in transformers, if you take, we have this attention mask, which is one or zero, one being the tokens that we want to attend to. Zero is the tokens that we don't want to attend to in the, in the input. So don't worry if you don't understand the details of all these things. The main point being zero comes up a lot in neural networks and we want to exactly map zero in our quantization uh, functions. So let's also understand how the zero point is computed. We have this range, floating point range, and we want to map it to this range. And zero should be mapped to some integer. 
without any error so if you, if you want to understand this formula for finding the zero point we have q min which is minus 128 and then we what we do here is we know the min float value which is the minimum floating value we divide it by scale so when we do this what is essentially happening is min float is mostly uh, on the left side of zero it's either zero or left side of zero because we assume that this range will always have zero in it because zero is as we saw we, zero is an important quantity that we want to map uh, now min float is the distance from zero to this leftmost point right and then when you divide it by scale what we are trying to capture is how many steps you want to take to reach this point so how many steps you want to take in the integer uh, number line this may not be a perfect integer so we round it off to the nearest integer so we know exactly these many steps to go back so what we do is we take q min which is minus 128 and then we add this quantity so min float is a negative number as you can see uh, so this negative number minus this minus negative number will become an addition so if you take this example it will be more clearer well let's say q min is minus 128 min float let's say is minus 0.244 scale is 0.0036 we have zero point computed as follows uh, this value min forward by scale gives you this quantity which is a negative number so that negative signs comes up comes up as an addition here and when you round it off it becomes 68 so essentially what we get is an integer as the zero point so this zero is mapped to minus 60. so now that we understand how the zero point is calculated and why is it necessary we can come back to this transformation function we have x which is the float value we divide it by scale to find the number of steps and we round it off to get the steps in an integer we offset by adding the zero point to it so that the zero gets mapped to the correct integer uh, then finally what we do is we clamp this so that anything goes out of this bound q max or q min is brought into that range so what clamp does is if it goes above q max it brings it back to q max if it goes below q min it brings it back to q min so that is all clamp is doing just to make sure that the final output is within this range uh, so that's how you get the quantized value. And similarly, one, if you want to dequantize it back to the floating point value, you can use the same formula, which is like the inverse of what we are doing here. We have the quantized q x q. We subtract the zero point and then multiply it with the scale to get the floating point value. So this is how uniform affine quantization works. Now that we have seen affine quantization, let's look at another technique called symmetric quantization which is like a special case of affine condensation. So here there are a few points. One is we force the zero point to be zero, which means the real value zero is exactly represented as the integer zero. Another point is the mapping, the target range is not from minus 128 to 127, but it is from minus 127 to 127. Uh, this is to make sure there is a symmetry and we will see why this symmetry comes into play. Uh, then you have the scale which is calculated using a slightly different technique so we define something called alpha which is the max absolute value in that floating point range that we want to map uh, the formula is so, uh, the formula is like this max of absolute value of min float and absolute value of max float so what we are trying to do is what is the maximum absolute value in that range if you take this range minus 0.5 to 2.5 alpha is 2.5 we take this range minus 7.5 to 2.5 the alpha is 7.5 and we define scale like this we take alpha and divide it by this quantity uh, for int 8 it will be 127 so let's try to get some intuition behind this scale calculation uh, so in affine quantization if you remember we were dividing the whole range by q max minus q min q max minus q min turned out to be 255 for a bit integer but here we are dividing it by 127 which is half of it and what alpha is trying to capture is alpha is trying to capture on which side of zero i have the biggest range so if you take this range for example minus one to three i have more a bigger range on the right side of the zero so alpha will be three here in this case whereas if you see this this 
range if you see alpha will be uh, again 3 here and it is trying to capture from 0 to 3 on the left side of uh, 0 and scale and in computing scale we are dividing this alpha by 127 so basically we are partitioning the range using 0 and splitting it into two ranges we are selecting the bigger of those two ranges which can fall on the left side or the right side of 0 and we are mapping that range to 127 partitions in in our int8 format 127 is basically the half of the partitions that we, that is available for us and this defines our step size which is the scale and then we just mirror it on the other side of the zero so ultimately in symmetric quantization we are finally mapping from minus alpha to alpha and then mapping all those numbers into uh, this target range minus 127 to 127 so because we are doing this mirroring we wanted to wanted it to be symmetric uh, that is why the name symmetric quantization so comparing both of these quantization techniques uh, you could say affine quantization is more expressive in terms of using its full capacity of int 8 uh, in representing our source range to the target range uh, but it has this overhead of shifting by 0 point 0 point could be a non a non zero integer so we need to shift the values by zero point to make sure that zero gets mapped exactly to an integer whereas in symmetric quantization uh, it doesn't utilize its full capacity of int 8 but it's slightly faster since it can avoid this operation of adding zero point because zero point is anyway uh, forced to be zero so you don't need to do this uh, shifting by zero point in symmetric quantization So, using some of these techniques as building blocks, there are there are different approaches that are supported in uh, various frameworks. And mainly in PyTorch, we have three approaches. We have the dynamic quantization, we have post-training static quantization, and then we have quantization of training. So, let's try to understand at a high level how these approaches differ from each other. So, first we have dynamic quantization. So, we know the weights in a neural network are fixed. we could use the approaches that we discussed either uniform quantization or a fine uh, uniform a fine quantization or the uniform symmetric quantization and turn these weights into integers offline but the activations in a neural network are not fixed and it is dependent on the um, input that is given during the inference so activations are also converted to int 8 but this is happening dynamically during the computation matrix multiplication computation at inference time So again, you can imagine this happening as uh, you get the max value and the min value and map that range to the integers using the scale and zero point, and then doing this transformation. And because both the weights and the inputs are in int eight, we can do matrix multiplication using efficient uh, int eight implementations, thus resulting in faster compute. After the computation is done, the results are dequantized back to floats. so that it can be passed on to the next layer dynamic quantization is probably the easiest to implement uh, and try out if you see the code is just one line you just import torch and then uh, use this quantize dynamic uh, function where you pass in your model name and you pass in a set of layers that you want to quantize so here if you see we are only quantizing the linear layers and then we express what is our target type that we want to be so we have this format called Q int eight, which represents the integer eight bit quantization, and finally we get the quantized model. So now let's see how post-training uh, static quantization differs from dynamic quantization. Here the weights are converted to int eight offline. So static quantization performs this additional step of first feeding a batch of data into the network as a preparation. Uh, so we have this observer modules inserted. into the mod uh, into the neural network model which captures the statistics of the data distribution coming happening at each layer so it calculates the min value max value of different activations coming at each layer and then uses this to calculate the scale and the zero point so this information is used to determine how specifically different activations should be quantized at for inference time So the third approach is quantization aware training which yields the highest accuracy of the three techniques but it is not as easy as uh, the first two techniques 
So we kind of set up a training environment where the quantization process is also taken into consideration. So this can happen either during the full initial training or during the fine tuning process. Uh, we fake quantize all the weights and activation. So fake quantize means uh, we will still have the floating point uh, type during the training process, but we quantize it to represent it in the int eight values. So all the values are still in floats, but they are rounded out to mimic the int eight values. So these are special operations that happen uh, in, uh, in front of different layers. And the entire training is done along with all these operations. So the computations are still done using floating point numbers and the network sees them as rounded off integers. So why this helps is all the weight adjustments during training are made while aware of this fact that the model will ultimately be quantized. So you can imagine the weights adjusting themselves to uh, overcome the quantization error that is going to happen when you actually express it in int 8 format. So this is how it is trying to achieve the highest accuracy of the three techniques. You would need to do this uh, training and fine tuning uh, process. So that's why it is called quantization aware training. So these are the three methods. Uh, we can dive into more detailed videos on uh, these methods if you want. Uh, so I guess that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hope you've got a high level overview of how quantization works. Questions and comments, please shoot them below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and adios.